Praise the Lord. God is so good that he sends us his best. God sends us the servants of the Lord that have a word in due season. And what you're about to hear is how we have grown here at Rock City Church because we invite people to come in that have a real word from God, men that and women that love God with all their hearts and have great integrity. And we bring them in to bless us here at this local church. And we get to share that blessing with you you, the audience, those of you that view this by video and by YouTube, you get to view what God does here at Rock City Church. It's a great time and a great uh, experience when we can come and uh, sit together and hear the word of the Lord and know that we're being uh, trained and we're being equipped to do all that God has us to do for his kingdom. So I bless you and I know you're going to enjoy the speaker today. So I want to talk to you today about, today about lighting up your world, because that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to light up our world today. In fact, about a week ago when my husband just said, all right, let's put the, tree, the lights up on the trees outside. So we do this one big tree, and he climbs up on this ladder, not just like this high of a ladder, but in a ladder that extends and extends and extends. And so here I am holding the ladder. Well, he climbs up, and he's rapid trees, and he's climbing in the branch, and he's taking it over here, putting the ladder on this side, over here. And at one point I said, you know, we really, probably don't even need to put the decorations up. Who's going to see them? The kids aren't coming over. I mean, are we doing this for our neighbors? And he's like, don't be a party pooper, you know. Come out here and help me. And so there I was, like, oh, God, don't let him fall, you know. I mean, it's not like he's just 23. But there he did a great job. And so my thoughts were, they don't even show up in the daytime. You know, my kids aren't even going to see them. And, and so I was pondering, you know, how pretty they look at night. The lights shine and indoors and out. And I'm thinking about how they're going to miss them. And the Holy Spirit just opened my eyes to see a truth about darkness. And it was my light, my life, and my tree lit up. And, and he said, you know what? Trees, your life lit up always is better at night in the darkness. It always shows up better in the darkness. It doesn't show up. Can you see all the lights on me in here? It's so bright. Let me prove that to you by let's just looking at the difference. See the lights? All right, now look at them. And, and um, my life, my tree lit up. It's better seen in darkness and, uh, and light uh, than it is in the light in the day. The fruit and the gifts of the Spirit, kindness, love, joy, peace, patience. But where they're seen the brightest is where it's the, dark, the darkest. And that's where the oohs and the ahs happen. I mean, how many people, have, have, think of the monument. Any of you go downtown and see the Christmas tree lit up at the monument? Have they ever done it in the daytime? When do they do it? Why? So you can see it, because it's magnificent. How about New York? When do we want to walk the streets of New York? When do we want to go to Rockefeller Center? At night. Why? Because the lights, why do they show up? Because it's dark, and they're bright, and that's when they're the brightest. And that's what God wants to do. Jesus, this should be our prayer. May I shine brightly in dark places so others can see me. And ooh and ah over the beauty and the goodness and the brightness, may they see you in me. Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And, when I, and, and I, I, I was just kind of getting all this on... Thursday on Christmas morning. This, these were my thoughts on Christmas morning. And, um, and, and when the, the Holy Spirit started speaking to me. And I, the, the song came to me. I don't know who sings, but I just, the, the verse came to me. Let them see you in me. Let them hear you when I speak. Let them feel you when I sing. Let them see you. Let them see you in me. It's a song that's out there. Now, if I was to start singing, they'd probably be going, I ain't going to see a whole lot in that or hear a whole lot in that. But that, you know, let them, we want them, 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 the whosoever, to see him in us. And so my question to you today is, what are you doing to make that happen? What are you doing to make that happen? We need our lives to be full of lights and ornaments that display his glory. God wants our life to be full of his ornaments, his gifts, his light, so others can partake of it, to, to enjoy, to marvel, to declare, I want a tree that looks like yours. 
Or I want a life that looks like yours. I want that peace that you have. I want that joy that you have. I want that kindness that you have. What's on your tree? Not what's in your wallet, but what's on your tree? What's on the tree of your life? What, what, what's happening with it? How is that looking? How is that looking for you? Well, <clears throat> yes, I did bring my handy little Christmas bag that happens to have some decorations in it. And um, I am going to decorate a tree today. I'm going to deck a tree that looks and reflects the gifts and the goodness and the fruit of the spirit that ought to be on our lives, hanging on it. Look, I'm going to ask my Christmas tree, uh, my human Christmas tree to come up here. I have a human Christmas tree. So let's look, let's look at it. Um, Matthew 5, again, um, I read Matthew 5. Verse 16, but I'll start out, it says, we are called to be the salt in the world, salt and light. Just what, you know, what does that mean? You know, Bishop preached a whole message on salt. You're, some, of, some of you were here, the salt covenant. It was a powerful message. It did a whole series on it some time ago. And so we are called to be salt, but we're also called to be light. We're called to be the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hidden, Matthew 5, 14 says, and 15 says, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. And then 16, which I read to you before, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work, works and glorify your Father in heaven. And so the salt part of it, when it's applied, it dissolves and it's, it's what's going on on the inside. It disappears. That salt speaks of the inward part, the character of the Christian. And again, Bishop preached this. But what Jesus also described as people as being light. And we are to be light in dark places, um, which is on the outside. And the light speaks of the testimony of a follower of Christ, revealing and illuminating the truth. Yes, it's the things on the inside of us, but when we have those things on the inside of us, we should be radiating and shining brightly like a bright light. We as a people, we, we shine brighter in a group. And it's amazing. We can accomplish. We can accomplish stuff just ourselves, by ourselves. But together, we do things like the eternity play and see 900 people come to Christ in one week's time. You Christmas tree, you. This is how we should look. We should be so bright. We should be shining. We should be, we should be lit up. Day in and day out. He's a good sport. The how. How can we shine for God? Jesus says that we are to let our light shine before men in such a way that they'll see our good works and glorify God. How do we do that? We live for him. We live for God. We have to surrender our lives to him completely. Jesus say, it says that we're to let our light shine. In other words, when you get right with God and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, he's going to just shine through you. It's just like there he is. It's like the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit. These lights. It's just a person. If I could have put a big bulb inside of him and lit it up and he would have glowed, that would have been great. But this is as close as we're going to get, so you just have to imagine. This is the Holy Spirit. Light shining through him. And so how can we do that? We can hinder it. We can stop it. We can unplug the lights. We can unplug from the Holy Spirit. We can pull away from what God's wanting us to do. We can say no. We can hang ornaments on our tree that say unbelief, can't do, too busy, I'm tired, I did it last time, I need somebody else to do it. We could hang those kind on, preoccupied, uncaring. You know, and that's a lot of times the kind of gifts and the kind of ornaments and the kind of stuff that we hand to God. No, not me. How can you become a bright light in a dark world? As we begin a new year, here are a few thoughts and questions to begin. A couple of questions you can ask yourself. Where do I find myself being light? Just ask yourself, hmm, where do I find myself being light? What do I do to cause my light to shine? I'm not answering these for you, but these are these things. Kind of ask yourself. I ask myself, where do I struggle being light? What does the world look like? Look for it. Where does the world look for light? And where do they find it? When am I tempted to conceal my light? Ooh, around your friends that aren't saved, in that classroom. Ooh, not really with my boss. 
What opportunities do I have for sharing my light with others? Those are questions, and you probably have others that you need to ask yourself. God wants to make us credible witnesses. We'll only be credible by the fruit in our life, the witness and testimony of God in us. How many of you say, I need to have a witness and a testimony of God in me? God in me, so that I can be credible. Our ornaments are the fruit, the gifts. All of us get gifts we don't like. I told you some that God doesn't like excuses. Slack, lazy, indifference, you know? Do you ever get gifts you don't like? You want to take them back? Well, God wants you to take some of those, those unlovely, unflattering, unspiritual gifts off of your tree that hinder you, that hold you back, chains and those kind of things so that he can do something bright and shining and spectacular in your life this year. Well, God is really practical, and he's got some really good practical gifts. He's good at giving those kind of gifts. They're meant for us to display, the kind we can use every day, like love and joy and peace. We can unwrap them, and every day, the thing that's so amazing about God's gifts and his blessings and, and that he gives us is that every day they're brand new. Every day we can open them again. How great would that be? How great would that be? I mean, look at this. We got, we got gifts. We got gifts. Just think of this. If every day, every day, every day, every day, you had a gift that you had, you got up in the morning, and then there you were, there you were, at the feet of Jesus. Oh, my gosh. Joy's in there. I did not know that. Did you do that for me, Mr. Christmas Tree? Every day, like joy can be brand new in that box. Gosh, it should be hanging on the tree. <laughs> Joy. Wow, what's in this one? Nothing. Huh. The fragrance of Jesus. Oh, from being at his feet. I can go out with that fragrance, and I am going to smell so good because the Holy Spirit in me is just leaking out everywhere because of the time I spent with him. Let's look at a few and check and see if, you know, they're shining brightly for us. Galatians 5.22. This is one scripture. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Uh, uh, against such there is no law. I mean, how many laws do we have? We have the dumbest laws. We have, we have good laws. Okay, we do have good laws. We have great laws. We live in a great country, but we do have some stupid ones. Stupid rules and laws. But I'm not going to go there, okay, because I'd rather focus on the goodness and the greatness of God. Because against those things, nobody can, nobody. Joy. There is no law against how much joy you can have. There is no law against how much, how much peace you can have. There is no law against how much long suffering. No, it doesn't say it doesn't say just suffering, long-suffering. That's just like the thing that works patience in you, long-suffering. There's no law against it. There's no, and so the things that come our way that are creating that in us, that's good. It makes us long-suffering without going nuts and crazy and, you know, knocking somebody out, taking them out because we got the Holy Spirit in us. I must have love. This maybe is the best ornament of all. It's the best one to give and to share. Do you know how many people just need love? They just need love. They need it. They want it. They're lacking. Christmas time more than any time. You know, families that are apart and hurting, fam people who have gone through tough times, divorces, they're by themselves. A lot of them just need love. It's maybe the most important of all, because God is love. He loves us unconditionally. He loved us so much he gave us his son, the greatest gift of all, the most costly gift ever given. God's love is uninfluenced. You know, nothing can, nothing can influence it. It's, it's already set. So nothing can happen to change it. We love because of what's in us, but the love of God is free and, un and spontaneous and ongoing. Love and favor go together. They're inseparable. The goodwill and grace of God gave his son. So his love is gracious. We could spend a whole 
message just talking about the love of God. But that's just one of the ornaments. It's so much more than that. That's why I said you could probably bring a little sticker up of what love is to you and add it to this tree. But we don't have time to do that. How's your love light shining? That's my question to you. What can our lives do with a love like that? Are we hiding it or are we sharing it? Peace. Let's put it right here. I'm liking my Christmas tree. I got love. I got peace. People everywhere want peace. There's fighting. Well, they're, they think they're fighting to get peace in their, in their little area, in their little nation. People everywhere want peace. It's a great gift. Um, you know, we think, oh, I want peace so I can get rid of stress and get some rest. That's not the kind of peace that God has. But it's, it's so, so much more than that because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Philippians 4, 7 says, The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And the Message Bible says, Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. If you pray, you'll get your peace. All right, then there's praise. That's not one of the fruit of the Spirit, but it is a wonderful ornament. It's a wonderful thing that we can put in our lives. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. I think this is a message Bible. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Isn't it? I mean, do you ever, do you ever get worried? Just worried about something? You're fretting, just stuff, something's going on. Could be your, you know, physical body. It could be your, it could be your, um, finances, it could be job, it could be any number of things, but he will come and displace. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. That happens when we get into prayer. We get on our knees and we start to pray. You can't stay down and depressed and bummed out and all of that when you start speaking in tongues and praising God. You know how I know? Because I've done it a gazillion times. And the good thing is that every day, every day, uh, I can open up that box and that joy is there, brand new. That love is there, brand new. That, that praise is there, brand new. They are gifts that never run out. It's not like my pepper. Oh my gosh, I'm out of pepper. Oh, I don't have any cinnamon for my cake. Oh, I don't have any butter to go in the sauce. It never runs out. (sighs) His goodness, his presence. What comes to me when I start praising? What comes to me when I start worshiping? All my cares, they go away. Faith and expectation. Faith. Faith. I love joy. I'm going to tuck it in. I'm going to hang it on my ear. I'm going to put it on my head. I don't know. I don't have a necklace to hang it on. Faith. Faith. Do you know that with faith comes expectation? Because when you have faith, you expect God to do something. When you have faith, your expectations build. They grow. They get up there. Faith, Hebrews 11 1 says, is the substance of things hopes for, hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. But fear is the opposite of faith. Fear is the opposite of faith, and it takes faith to accept anything good in our lives. And we have to grab that faith and say, that was then, but this is now. And I'm going to take hold of faith, and I'm going to have an expectancy. I'm not going to let my mind be foreboding on what happened and that it's going to happen again because I have the faith that God's put in me, and now I have an expectation for great things in my life, that God can take those things, as horrible as maybe they were, and turn them around for good. How can that be? Because then you can possibly share with another person who's gone through the same thing and pull them out of the pit that they were in. And he gives us the opportunity to share our testimonies with them so they can relate, so we can open the door for them, so they can come in. 
You know, Bishop's testimony, my testimony, uh, it, gives, it op helps us to open a door and make it easier for people to come in. So who's going to tell them if it's not us? Who's going to tell them if we're not out there telling them to help them to get that faith and that expectation? Another one is goodness. God is good. Everything he does is good and wonderful. Everything God gives and offers, offers is greater than what the devil can ever offer. So shouldn't our expectations come from God? Goodness. God, there's goodness. He's a God of goodness. And that kind of goes along with expectations because when your faith is built up and you see and you have expectation, you see the goodness of God. God wants to do something outrageously wonderful in every one of our lives, every moment of every day. But you have to be ready to expect it to happen. If you're walking down, slumped over, you're not going to see it. You're not going to be ready for it. But if you're up and you're looking and you're watching, you know the word for this coming year, watch. We need to watch and look with expectancy for what God's going to do in our lives. Answering that prayer, saving that loved one, opening the door that we've been praying for, and so much more than just our little old, world, our little old worlds. Kindness. Show a little kindness. You get a little more gentleness. Kindness. Kind words. Kind thoughts. Kind deeds, taking dinner to somebody who's sick, helping out somebody with their babies when you've already been babysitting every single day for the last two weeks. And she calls you, I need to go see, I need to go do. Can you watch my kids again? And you're gritting your teeth. And then the Holy Spirit speak to you now and say, show a little kindness. She's done it for you. Do it for her. Even if she hadn't done it for you, I hear you. I hear you saying it. She ain't done it for me. She ain't done it for me. Last time I asked her, she didn't do it for me. Show a little kindness. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Show up in the nursery. Show up to clean the kitchen. Show up to help your neighbor and long-suffering. Let's put that on the back. We don't really like that one too much, do we? Long-suffering. 2 Timothy 2, 21. Become, become the kind of container God can use to present any and every kind of gift to his guests for their blessing. That's my scripture for you to close tonight, today. Become the kind of container that God can use to present or to be a present to every kind of gift to his guest. Who are his guests? Everything he wants to, everybody he wants to invite to the dinner. Everybody he wants to invite to the banquet. Everybody he wants to invite into the kingdom. That's his guest. We were guests. He brought us in. He drew us in. We became partakers. And now we are containers. And we can be the kind of container that he wants to use to draw others in. We started off talking about lighting up our world with this light. Let's make this our prayer for 2015. Let's see what our tree looks like again. Just take those lights down. And that's what he wants. He wants to shine through us. He wants to be a light. He wants to be a light so others can see.